Hey there, we are the second grade team at Boonesboro Elementary School. I'm Janet Young. This is Megan Plumador, Melissa McCarter, and Stephanie Kraft. And we were asked to share just a bit of our organization uh, plans to support the distance learning efforts of our students. We're going to share with you a daily format that we use that we push out onto Google Classroom each day, a new slideshow. And then some of our ways for organizing the week at the end of this slideshow. So each day we created a different slideshow. This uh, supported the at home learning packets that were mailed to students homes. Um, on Friday afternoons, we posted one slideshow for each day, and we did that to help to accommodate uh, our students that did a lot of work over the weekends, so parents could lay out their week. Um, it ended up giving them about nine days to get everything turned in, so we made sure that we posted by Friday afternoon for the following week. Um, on the opening slide, we posted links for the digital packet, and this was helpful for our students that had a delay in receiving their paper packets at home. They didn't have to print it or they didn't have to go to school and pick one up, but they could see what it was and what they needed to get done um, just as a way to bridge that gap when they had time. And we also created a questions document. We found in the early days that a lot of our parents had similar questions and a lot of our students were experiencing similar uh, struggles, whether it be with technology or accessing the information. So we created uh, one question doc that all four of us checked every day. And we answered what we could or supported each other in answering one another's questions. But this was a way for us to address some of those questions that were coming up uh, between multiple families. Each week we pre-recorded the um, what we call the Monday morning message. We did this as a team uh, for two reasons. We wanted the students and parents to um, receive the same message, but we also wanted them to see that we are working together as a team um, because that's what we had to do in order to get through this distance learning uh, environment. We wrote a script before taping so that we could ensure that everything we wanted to say was covered, that we made sure all the material was covered for the week, each of us taking a part to discuss. Then we taped the message on Thursday so it was ready to post on Friday into Monday's slideshow. The next two slides just give students and parents a quick overview of the learning goals and standards that are going to be covered um, in ELA for the week. And we did the same thing for math that you'll see later in the slides. So in response to some of the parents and how, how they were dealing with everything that's going on in their lives, as well as what we were sending out, we found that we needed to restructure our slides. And so we came up with the idea of having a must do slide. So we go ahead and give them everything that they needed to do to turn in to us for that day. Um, you'll also notice that there is a modified must do slide. This did not go out to every child. We chose the students who would get the modified slides and they only saw their modified slides instead of seeing the regular slides for everybody else. And this allowed us, since you can choose who the slides go to on Google Classroom, this has allowed us to differentiate to suit the needs of the students best. Um, so we have two different must-do slides. We also have two different choice boards. We would include, of course, a choice board for everyone to go ahead and do. And then we would have a modified choice board so that it would allow more structure for those students who needed to go ahead and have their choices identified for them. And this went out only to those students who we chose to get it. Not everyone saw these slides. And one thing that we always did, our next slide was to do the shared reading. And this was another slide that we wanted to give students access to all the readings for the week, but we wanted to go ahead and give them the opportunity to do it as a shared reading. So this was another slide that was modified and sent to those students who needed the assistance, not to everyone. And the last slide that I'm going to discuss is a think about it slide. We thought it was really important to get them to activate their brains and to think about a picture, a question, something to go ahead and activate their learning. 
and to give them a chance not to have to turn in anything, but to give them a chance to go ahead and discuss it with a parent or family member. And for this slide, we went ahead, this was about the past and the present, and we shared a picture of downtown Boonesboro with them just to spark their learning. The second kind of activities we offered were should do activities. These are activities that were necessary to learn and master and transfer the skills, but they would not be graded. The should do slide typically contained a read aloud part of a novel, independent reading, the word of the day routine, and often some books from Epic that supported the science and social studies content. Early on in the journey, we decided that we would offer a novel per week to our students. We broke the novel into five parts and completed the entire thing in one week. We included a strategic reading behavior before reading and a comprehension question after reading that the children answered on Google Classroom in a conversational format. The word of the day routine was an attempt of ours to continue a routine from traditional school. Each day we presented a word that followed a second grade phonics pattern and included a basic sentence. The students were asked to do two things. They decoded the word and then they expanded on that simple sentence to add imagery to paint a picture and then they turned the whole document into us on Fridays. So we flipped at the must do and should do slides. Must do was what needed to be done for a grade. Uh, should do supported the content that needed to happen to stay on track as a second grader, but we wanted to also offer a may do option. Uh, doing this was gonna give some choice for students and differentiate based on what their needs were. Some kids needed more to help them grow as readers and writers. Some of the may do options were not beneficial for all, um, but it did support what they were looking for to continue growing. The fluency piece offered support for readers that could benefit from increased fluency. Um, and really all readers could, something that we work on in the classroom, they were encouraged to work with one piece of text all throughout the week. This was text that was contained in their at-home packet, so they all had access to it. Um, we even encouraged them to video themselves, to listen to their reading, to consider how their uh, fluency improved as the week went on. Did it sound better on Friday than it did at the beginning of the week? So this was something that could benefit all. Uh, we also offered an enrichment opportunity choice board each week. And the purpose of this was to complement and enrich the content that was being um, supported throughout the at-home packet. Uh, it gave them options so that they could choose what they wanted to work on, but it offered opportunities to accelerate or to grow. Um, this was meant to meet the needs of our gate students as well as our magnet students and offer some choice there. And back to the may do slide, we always tried to find text that we knew students would have access to. Uh, we knew all of our students had access to Epic, so we would find uh, text that supported either the science and social studies content or met those goals as a reader and included those on the may do. So we encouraged but didn't require. And each day we made sure that we included a different Go Noodle, uh, encouraged them to take a break. We would have done this in the classroom. This was just a piece that we could send home with them each day. So the next couple of slides are our math slides and they are structured much like the ELA slides. We um, always started with the, again, looking at the learning goal and the success criteria. Um, we incorporated just to give them um, another way to look at the different resources that were available. So this was just another way for us to remind parents and students of the different resources that they have available for them. And like I said, all of our math slides were structured the same way the ELA slides were. We had the think about it slide, which we really used kind of like a math routine like you would in the classroom. And then, of course, we had our must-do slides and all the materials that they would need to go with the must-do slides. When we did our instructional videos, we tried to incorporate the Learn Zillion videos in with our pre-recorded um, videos just so that the students actually were seeing us teaching. Um, that was one thing that parents were recommending uh, when we were getting some feedback from them. 
So we went ahead and started doing some pre-recorded lessons um, and used them much like we would have in the classroom as a guided practice and whole group lesson with guided practice, um, just like in the classroom. And we also modified our math slides as well. We had um, the daily activity and then we also incorporated an alternative or modified activity just for some students that needed a little bit more structure with the math work. Um, this was not offered to all of our students, just those that we felt needed this um, particular modification in the, in the slideshow. So like we said earlier, they would have gotten a modified slide uh, slideshow that had this activity incorporated into it. Our should do slides, again, just like our ELA slides, everything connected to the home packet and our may do slides. And then we ended our slideshow each week or each day with the encore slide, just as a reminder to the parents and students that they needed to also um, choose one encore to complete that day. We were not um, on the encores classrooms. They all had their own Google Classroom. So we didn't know what was being assigned to students each day and each week. So um, we just wanted to make sure that the students didn't forget that they still needed to, to complete an encore activity as well. As Janet mentioned earlier, we were gonna share some of our weekly organization that we did. Um, one way that we found that helped the parents is that we first asked them to stay off the stream and make sure that they went ahead and went to the classwork tab so we organized things in a way that made it easier for them and had topics for them like question of the day, week, the week, and we would also put in our Zoom meetings. In each weekly, we would have each daily slide and we would have the word of the day. And sometimes we would have the read aloud questions contained in that too. So our next thing that we're gonna go ahead and mention is our scheduled Zoom chats. These evolved as we became more and more comfortable with distance learning. We went ahead and, and had our Zoom chats up for the parents to be able to see so the students would know what they had to come prepared for and how we were structuring our small group Zooms and our regular class Zooms. Some of us chose to go ahead and split our class in half so that we would have more time with each student and they would have more time to actually be heard. Others met with their class daily as a whole class. So we made sure that we fit the needs of our students best. We did several things to support each other as teachers. The main thing was that we set up a schedule so we all knew our roles and how to support each other. Some of us were good at technology, some of us were good at curriculum and we capitalized on those strengths. We did things like set a weekly Zoom meeting, usually two or three times a week, and we knew exactly what needed to be accomplished during those meetings. We met at 2 p.m. every time we met so that we knew to save that time for each other. We also did things early on, like establish that we were gonna shoot that morning message for Mondays every Thursday, so we came prepared. For us, as everything was changing and evolving around us, we found comfort in each other and the predictability of our schedule, the one thing that we could control. As we, as we wrap up um, this afternoon, anything that you want clarified or want a copy of or want some more information, feel free to email us. All of our emails are attached and we really appreciate your time this afternoon.